This is show 26 of the Cloth Diaper Podcast, and today I am chatting with Christina, another cloth diaper mom, about some of the environmental benefits and drawbacks of cloth diapering. Specifically, we're going to help answer the question about switching detergents and finding a less toxic option if that's something that's important to you. If this is your first time here, the Cloth Diaper Podcast is a somewhat regular, every other week show dedicated to everything cloth diapering. We share stories from brands, retailers, and parents around the world about their cloth diapering journey or whatever they have to share with us. I truly believe that cloth diapering is a big worldwide experience, that there's no one right way to do something, and I'm hoping to bring on all the different voices out there to share how things work for them how it might work for you, and what you might need to know about cloth diapering. Some of these shows are about bigger topics. Some of these shows are just casual sit-down topics. And today with Christina, I have a pull up a chair, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about some of the environmental benefits and maybe drawbacks to cloth diapering. Christina said she was pretty passionate about letting people know there were other detergents out there besides Tide. And I think that's an important topic and an important conversation to have. So grab a cup of coffee, let's jump on in and listen to this former food blogger, now turned cloth diaper mama, talk about how she got into cloth diapering, why she doesn't use Tide, and where she's going with natural detergents and how that might work for you. I hope you enjoy, and if you have any experiences you want to join, don't forget that you can just send me an email and we can get you on the show. What is your why for cloth diapering? Why did you start the adventure into cloth diapering? Um, okay, so I'm going to give you the Many, many years ago, this is almost 10 years ago, I, um, I was having like issues with um, an infection. And I'll skip some of this, but the, the short story is, is that I learned how to heal my body with food. And that's actually around the time that I became a food blogger because I began um, doing like tons of research into food as healing. And then that leads into the food system. And that leads into like natural living. I mean, everything is like connected. And so I knew like years before I had kids that I would be cloth diapering for environmental reasons. Um, so I, I've been cloth diapering since, since day one of my daughter's birth. And I, and I love it as much as I thought. (laughs) So it was just like a spiral of behavioral, like behaviors and how it impacts our body and the world around us. And Right. And that's probably definitely influenced your stash. So what do you, you choose to use to cloth diaper with? Um, I use smart bottoms. Um, I actually use the covers. Um, and then I use a bamboo insert, <laughs> which I saw your, your thing on Instagram recently about bamboo. And so maybe they're not the best, but um, I, I, we actually used hemp for a while and we were having leaks. So I, oh. I got bamboo. <laughs> Well, that's what I was. I was my one thing. I was like, why have you chosen bamboo over sticking to smart bottoms? their organic cotton insert cotton, um cotton i can't use either cotton was actually the first thing we used um before i before i had my first when i was pregnant with my first um, i went to like a, i went to two two different cloth diapering classes at two different stores and they both said like cotton you want cotton 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 so i got organic cotton inserts and my first daughter like she if she sat in a wet diaper for like one second like she was red and so I switched to the hemp or bamboo after that, then that went away. But she was just always red. Oh, so she just didn't really, something about the wet cotton she wasn't handling yeah. well. Interesting. It's funny how our bodies sometimes like react to things in you. Right. And you're like, but why? I wanted, would... I wanted cotton to work. Like I think cotton is probably the best, but. Yeah, there are a lot of perks to cotton just because like, yeah, as um, if my, if you who are listening and you haven't seen me on Instagram, but bamboo is a pretty hard on the environment, but not all bamboo manufacturing is hard on the environment. Some of it can be done responsibly. I just, right. I, don't, I don't know. We haven't heard a lot of cloth diaper brands talk about it, but um, a lot of it can be. And from my research lately, it looks like if it is being, um, if it is being manufactured in China, China just got really strict on their environmental policies. And so you can't really dump carbon disulfide into the water anymore. Like they used to. 
Okay. Um, so things are starting to clean up, but things are a little bit messy. The textile industry in general is really messy. Um, in your email to me, you had said, oh, I use bamboo inserts. And I wasn't really quite sure if you maybe where you had gotten to that story, but you got to that story because cotton wasn't working for your daughter. Right. And, that's and now, and now I know better and I would probably maybe try some different things or, or what, but it's kind of like one of those things where I, when you, when you know better, yeah. now hopefully, hopefully that daughter will be potty trading soon. So, and I would never recommend somebody to like, don't throw out your stash. You've already bought it. It's already uh, happened. It's the next story and the next conversation with the next person that you have, that you have that right. comes to change that. And smart bottoms does a really amazing job. I don't know if you've looked into their cotton manufacturing, but it's all done in the United States and it's all milled in the United States. Yeah. It's they're, all, they're a really good company. <laughs> yeah. They I have a, <laughs> they have a really good reputation and they look like they're really thinking through a lot of their steps and processes, which is awesome. Yeah. We don't see that enough. Um, so what do you see as some being some of the biggest environmental benefits to cloth diapering? Um, okay. So I was actually doing a, <laughs> uh, some research the other day on, um, on the landfill issue. Uh, we're actually really minimal with our trash. Like I am one of those people, like if my husband puts something in the trash that's recyclable, like I will dig it out. Like I've, I've been that way for years. It drives me nuts, but like, I, I feel you. I do I that too. <laughs> I cannot stand to see something in the trash that can be recycled. So, so the land, so obviously keeping diapers out of the landfill is like a really big deal. And so, um, this is in the United States, but 20 billion disposable diapers are added to the landfill each year, um, which creates about 3.5 million tons of waste. And it takes 500 years to decompose. So every disposable diaper that has ever been made and has ever been used is still here on earth. And like, <laughs> I don't know, that just gets to me. Like, like what does even, what does 3.5 million tons even look like? I'm going to Google that quickly. Cause I can't imagine like, has, do you know, did you ever come across any stats, like if somebody put that in football fields or something? Um, no, I haven't, but that would be you know what, Like as much as the beginning use of a cloth diaper also sucks, the end use also sucks because it's just like a disposable diaper is not going anywhere. You're going to. You know what? The fun fact is that 3.5 million tons of diapers a year, you said. That's equivalent. That's how much the world produces in waste a day. I don't know if you Google 3.5 million tons, but that's exactly the number that happens. So it's oh, like wow. the, the American population does that in diapers a, a year, you said, and yeah. the world does that in general waste a day. Oh my God, it's disgusting. It is. So is landfill, like landfill is a huge thing. And as much, I know I've talked about this on the show for anybody who's, um, we do build landfills better than we did in the old days, but landfills can still fail. And so right. even and then a disposable diaper takes 500 years to put that much trust into a landfill for 500 years is cool. Like, yeah, that's, I mean, sure it could, but uh, what are we going to do in 500 years? And the thing is, is that I, I actually um, a few years ago when we owned our house, um, we, ha I had a little compost pile back. Um, and so to, in order for something to decompose, it needs oxygen and, sunlight and when it's something is sitting in the bottom of a landfill then it's not getting that that's true right they usually just bury it and some some landfills behave differently but there's just generally a lot of burying and diapers are typically like double wrapped in plastic and right all it's going to do is break down into microplastics which increases toxicity of the environment so my next question that i had here was about the biggest environmental drawback to cloth diapering and i'm asking this because i think that's where your hesitation towards tide is yes okay so detergents um i know in the smart bottoms group that i'm in like they almost always recommend tide and it drives it's me not just scared. smart bottoms it's everywhere but, oh i'm sure i believe that I, yeah. I can only um but um i mean i guess cloth diapering and using tide is better than using disposables but that said <laughs> It's not like the best thing you can do. I feel like you're doing one good thing and then you're doing a, a, a bad thing. And, and that's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of, what are some of the like hesitations behind Tide? Like, okay, so, so yeah, I love Tide, but maybe okay, why is it? I know, I, know <laughs> I know, but why as a consumer should I be concerned? Like what are the big okay. concerning points about Tide? 
okay, Tide works. That's why, that's why they're committed. I remember my mom using Tide on our clothes um, growing up. Um, <laughs> but if you look at, um, if you look at an app like Think Dirty or the Environmental Working Group, um, which rates um, all kinds of cosmetics and um, soaps and products, um, detergents and things like that, um, Tide, okay, between those two sites, there's discrepancies, like, there's discrepancies between both of them on, like, every product almost, but with Tide, they both get bad, bad scores. Um, Tide gets a, a nine on Think Dirty, and then it gets a, depending on the product, it's a, it gets a D or an F on the Environmental Working Group, and the concerns are um, cancer, developmental, endocrine, um, reproductive effects, DNA damage, skin irritation, allergies, respiratory and organ effects, um, aquatic to toxicity, stuff like that. <laughs> stuff that I consider a big deal. Someone who has focused so much on natural healing, like doing things that, um, or being around things that are potentially harmful to your health, that's not something I want. <laughs> Is that because um, it's full of synthetics and fragrances? Is that primarily where those health effects come into? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. And, um, cause I just, I, um, that big report came out on disposable diaperings and I was digging into some of those chemicals and that's like your, your fragrances are huge impactors to health. And a lot of the times the research says they just don't even know, they just know that it impacts our body, but they don't know how, Right. which is kind of scary in itself. Right. Yeah. Right. You're like, um, okay, cool. You don't know how it does. You're just going to just put the statement out that it's not good. Um, and so you feel that even like you're not like the detergent doesn't necessarily wash out well enough to to have that to have any it, it, what am i it lingers too much it lingers too much still after washing to have oh, yeah. a risk that you're not willing to take for your family i mean just the fact that you can smell when i when i buy a used diaper from the buy sell trade and it's been washed and tied like i can smell it as soon as i open the mailbox like as soon as i open the mailbox <laughs> I I have I've had that experience once. I I wash and tie. I know I like this is one of these things like you know like I know better. I just I'm too scared. Yeah, and I, a lot of people say that and I get it. Like when you're dealing with human waste like I I get it. Like you you want to make sure you wash that out I know, like right? baby bottom. Like I get it. I I really do. <laughs> uh, well, and I think like for me, I I don't I can't quite like I can't quite see the impact of washing and then wearing something, even though I know that, you know, putting a diaper on our, it's literally our genitals, right? For right. 12, 24 hours a day could potentially have some sort of impact on my overall reproductive health, right? But I just, I can't see that. But the only, so I can see and I can understand though about the toxicity of the water environments and how that's going to impact, impact our ecosystems. But because that, um, that reproductive and overall health thing is so long-term, it's so hard for me to kind of wrap around in my head and grasp long-term long-term impacts like that are just real go ahead sorry um i was just gonna say I, I i guess i didn't i didn't think of that before but if i would have thought would have thought of that issue um before then i would have googled um some stats on reproductive health because i'm all i know is that in the united states like um there are more fertility issues um and secondary infertility issues than than they I, I gotta believe that's that's not a coincidence. There, there's something happening somewhere. Yeah, and, and whether I, it's detergents are probably only adding to all the the problems. Right. Yeah, you know, the issues. Like it's not the only. The problem is that detergents aren't the only one in the system of things that right. could be impacting our overall health, and that's why it's hard to pinpoint it and say we need to take this out of our because it's like one of twenty five things. But if you can reduce every little thing that you can reduce, right? Right. And the thing is, is that on the on the rare occasion when they do do test something, they can say, no, this doesn't have an effect. But probably it doesn't have an effect in it if it was in one product and you know one small amount in one product. But it's it's a lot of things combined. So. Yeah. That's that's just like the scary world that we are in in 2019 is that trying to figure out how everything plays together. Right. Yeah. It's overwhelming. Yeah, it is. It is. We do, the best we, can, we do the best we can with the information that we have and we're always learning. And so 
I have a huge hesitation with breaking up with Ty just because I'm scared about what to use next. So Christina, where would you point somebody to next? Um, like if they're listening and they're thinking, hmm, you know what? Maybe I should finally get off the tide wagon. Um, well, if you want to just look online, um, I would recommend the Think Dirty app or the Environmental Working Group. Um, they have an app and a website. I actually like the website better for that. Um, but um, you can look up any, almost any detergent you can think of and, and see what kind of rating it gets. And also um, it'll tell you why it gets the rating. Um, so for me, the, the place where I started, I'm not sure what it's like in Canada, but um, we have natural food stores. So there's one store in particular where they have like the highest standards of of ingredients that they will and will not allow in their store. I mean, I've, I've seen the list. It was seriously like 20 pages long of, of ingredients that they don't allow. And that's in food and in um, like personal care products. Well, that's crazy. Um, I My listeners are pretty much worldwide. So this could be, exist in any town and around the world. Like it's, it's not just American guys. I know that in Australia, they have pretty eco stores and wherever. So you, you have this super duper. Right. Um, and so in the United States, um, <laughs> so the store I go to is called natural grocers. And so they have the highest standards. So I, so I go there, I shop there a lot. And, um, I basically say, what do they have? I know that this is a good starting point. So then mm-hmm. I, 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 um, I, I came home and I looked up what they have, what, what do they have? And what does environmental working group say about that? Now that said, it is not like, you can't just go to the store and like pick out anything you want. Like it, it's a store, they're biased, you know, Mm-hmm. whatever so um you still have to do your homework but i feel like that's a good starting there's a lot of judgment about detergents out there right so how oh, do yeah. you how do you work your way through knowing if it's going to work for you um and your family with all of the kind of information out there because if you guys are listening like fluff love university is the constantly referenced resource for detergents but their detergent list was made off of a um, a survey that went out to the general population and whatever worked for people went to the top and whatever didn't work for people went to the bottom. Right. No, okay. I believe so. Yeah. That's, that's kind of how I understood it to work. Like it wasn't actually a lot of, um, it was just like a, it was an experiential thing. So it's not the gold standard, but a lot of these detergents that you're going to find in that aisle, or if you're going to look up the products are probably going to be at the bottom. And how do you feel confident what would be your advice to somebody to feel confident in using a detergent that's probably ranked poorly by a cloth diaper uh, group, but might rank highly environmentally? Do you think it would work? Would it work? Is there, how do you know if it will work for you? I guess that's okay. kind of what I'm so asking. The, the, the answer is, is that you don't know until you, okay. uh, and, and I know people talk about <laughs> detergents and I, the, 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 the thing I want to say is, like give it a fair shot. I know it's hard unless you're having like really obvious and harmful, um, like super serious diaper rashes or something, you know, something like that, something that's very obvious and very painful. Like you don't want to keep using it, but otherwise like give it a fair shot. Okay. Um, and what do you consider a fair shot? Would that be like a month of use? Uh, yeah, it's a probably a month would be, would, would probably okay. should be a good, good answer. And pretty much, have you seen anything like totally not work or do you see it being a very like individual to individual experience? It, it's so individual. In fact, I was, I was literally just looking this up the other day because, um, cause I'm actually going to switch my detergent. <laughs> um, so, and so yeah, I saw all kinds of things recommended and then all kinds of people say, no, that doesn't work or that gave me, a, that burned my baby and you know, all kinds of things. So, so the, the, the resolution is that you don't know if it's going to work. You just got to you pick, pick which one fits your, your preferences, your ideals, what you believe in and, and go with it and, and give it a good shot. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't mean that you need to necessarily try something more toxic. It just means maybe you need to try something different. Okay. So Again, it adds just to the overwhelming nature of cloth diapering. But everything is so personal and ev- like everybody's water, everyone's wash routine, their textiles, they use their child's pee at all. <laughs> complicates things, hey? Uh, so what are you using that works? What have you tried that works? What's been your personal okay. experience? I got, I got really lucky in that um, I've been using 7th generation Ultra Power Plus. I've used this for the entire two and a half years that I have cloth diapered. I've, I've heard really good things about that one. Yes. 
um, I've never had any issues. I don't have, I don't have the leak issues that people say they have. I don't have the stink issues. I don't, I've done one strip, um, ever in my cloth diapering experience. And I don't even think that I had to, um, I think I was having, I don't remember, but I was having a different issue and I thought I needed to strip. I probably did it. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I think it works great. Um, I also use Calgon, which is not really good, um, for my, because I have hard water. Um, so that's, that's been my combination that I've had that said, when you know better, you do better. So I am, I am looking. So you've been using seventh generation with Calgon and it's been working, but you're currently in pursuit of a different combo for your life, seeing if you can find something that will be a little bit better. Right. And your big hesitation right now is just the, is the Calgon. Um, yeah. Okay. So Calgon, um, I didn't write that down, but it, Calgon gets like a C or possibly worse. Um, but it's, it's not great. No. Um, seventh generation, um, seventh generation gets a C too, which is, which is better than Tide, but it's still a C. So I'm looking for an A. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it exists? Is this your unicorn detergent out there? Um, okay. So there, I mean, there are some with A's obviously, but, um, whether they work for cloth diapers, um, so what I'm going to try next, um, and I'm almost out of detergent, <laughs> A is BioClean. Okay. It's, it's my understanding that BioClean, um, the powder, will not only replace my seventh generation, but I will be able to eliminate the Calgon too. So okay. fingers crossed for that, but I don't know. <laughs> well, than, uh, you don't know. Like, and it might be work. It might, for if you're listening, you might find that BioClean works for you, but it, it might not work for Christina. It might work for me. That's, that's right. it's like diapers, right? That's why there's a thousand different diapers out there. Right. So, something might, I don't know. Do you find that, um, like the way that somebody diapers impacts, like what kind of detergent they can, I can't, you know? Um, the only thing I was going to say is the only thing I've heard personally is that microfiber washes a little differently. Um, yeah. And I, sometimes I wonder if that's that reactions that people get is if they're washing, uh, a more eco-friendly detergent with a synthetic and it's just not really right. mixing. Yeah, I've definitely, my, my recent recommendation to people is if they want to use a more eco-friendly detergent is that they consider more natural fibers and they consider simpler diapers. It can right. definitely help get there. One of the things that I like about covers, which in smart bottoms, um, they're all in ones are, are more popular than their covers. Um, yeah, I, I was surprised to meet somebody who loves their covers. I was, I was just talking with Jacqueline from Jay's Nest, and we were like, I actually don't really know anybody who uses their covers. And here we go, Christina on the show. Love the, loves yeah. the covers. Um, and one, but one of the things that I like about it is that it separates from the inserts. So if you're kind of having issues with one, you don't have to throw away the whole, you don't throw away metaphorically, throw away the whole diaper. You, can you just re replace one with the other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you've had problems with, with actually you just said you used seventh generation for three years. So if somebody was trying out new detergents and they had a problem, what would be your recommendation before they went to a new detergent going on? It depends on the issue. I know, right? That's, yeah, I, um, I think, um, stripping is not recommended mm -hmm. unless you have like a pretty serious issue. Yeah. Like it's, from my understanding is that it's really harsh on diapers. So it is, it can be. And it's like, uh, time kill. Yeah. <laughs> it's not fun to do at all. Um, what would be your best piece of advice for anybody looking for support on figuring out their wash routine? If like me, they're probably feeling very overwhelmed. Where would you encourage them to go? Who would you encourage them to ask questions to, to find the right support that they need to make a switch to a detergent that might be more better for their health? Well, whatever, whatever brand of diaper they're primarily, primarily using, um, I think that almost all of them have their own little groups yeah. now. So I know like Smarty Pants um, group, the Smart Bottoms, sorry, um, they call it the Smarty Pants. <laughs> the Smart Bottoms group is really, um, is really helpful about things. Um, that said, they do, they do recommend Tide a lot, which is why I always try to jump in and say like, there's other options. Um, but I would say that your, your cloth diaper group is a good place to start. If you have a natural parenting store um, in your area, um, sometimes they are helpful too. Um, I remember when I, when I started and when I went to those classes, they recommended um, rock and green, which at the time was a booster and not a detergent. Now I think it is a detergent, but at the time it was a booster and they told, they told me to wash only in the, booster, right. So you gotta be careful. But I think, I think there's a lot more information than there was even a couple of years ago now. 
Oh yeah, I like cloth diapering in 2019 is definitely not the same as 2014. We're definitely learning. More options are coming available. I there's a local mom here. She used rocking green amazingly for years, um, but it doesn't work for some people, right? Like it's and that's totally it. She'd be like, uh, it can work for you if you make it work for you. But sometimes I- actually. Once my, I keep saying once my box is done, but I, every time I get to the detergent aisle, I go, oh, I don't even know where to look. Um, But I think I might just go to the natural store in town because that's going to reduce my options. Right. And that's my problem right now when I go to the grocery store and I'm looking, I'm like, I, there's so many here and I get overwhelmed and then I just leave what I normally use. But if I go to the... If I go to the natural store in town, like you just suggested, first of all, they have amazing customer service. Yes, they Second do. Of all, they have much less selection. So hopefully they can point me in the right direction. And if I just start, you just start, just start it, right? Like, I think that's right. probably been my hesitation as I'm scared to start it. But you just said, like, give it a chance. You never know. And if right. it doesn't work, like, what's the worst possible outcome is, like, a rash. Hopefully you would, I find that I always get smells before I get rashes, so pretty extreme to get to- the health is too and i was reading an article before i got on here with you is that tide is actually made with a lot of synthetics that are based in palm oil mm-hmm. um, and palm oil is massive deforestation in indonesia right and that complicates things even more and like we think about us but we uh, for you forget where it came from it had to come from it it was kind of complex, so I'm not entirely sure, and I don't want to specifically <laughs> state that. But you can go read it, and you can go see it. It seemed like palm oil, palm tree de- deforestation. All right. bad. <laughs> all bad. Yeah. Yeah. There's so palm oil that a lot of organic food companies will use, but if you're talking about something like Tide, I, I, doubt, I doubt they're sourcing out the best. The, like, organic stuff. palm oil that's been properly forested? Yeah. Yeah. There's, right, there's always... There's that's, that's the complexity of it, like cotton too, right? There's or got, or the organic cotton, and then there's regular cotton, and that's two entirely different environmental right. impacts. <laughs> Completely different. You're talking a GMO and a non-GMO and fertilizers and non-fertilizers. It's overwhelming environmental benefits. If someone says, I want a cloth diaper, and my reason why is the environment, where would you, how would you guide them? I would say, I mean, just those thoughts you're off to really, as far as cloth diapers, as far as detergent, pick something. Sometimes your gut, like I know it's like kind of a silly thing, like when you're referring to cloth diapers or even detergent, like to go with your gut, but like go with your gut, pick something. Like I wouldn't spend hours and hours stressing over it. Like pick something and go with it. Give it a try. It might be something that you end up loving. Yeah. You know what? Going with your gut is like, that's, that's life. Like <laughs> right. the best piece of advice you can give for anything. Go with your- right. the whole motherhood thing. Trust yourself. Yes, everything. Everything is, I mean, that's just what. Yeah, you got it. You can do. I know, right? There's only so much. You, um, so you're a Smart Bottoms ambassador. So you have a public Instagram people could follow you at? Yes, I do. I am on Instagram at, um, at, at Eco Girl Mama, E C O G I R L. Cool. Thank you so much for joining me, Christina. I hope that this gives some food for thought for a lot of people who are listening, like at least a starting point to think about looking into their detergent more because it's not just Tide. Tide is not the only evil out there. That's what I probably should also put it. Like there are a lot of yes. other detergents that could be impacting your health, that could be impacting the environment, taking a, a pause, looking into it. There is absolutely no shame if you are a cloth diaper parent or family who uses Tide to wash your cloth diapers. The thing that's awesome about Tide and the reason that I've used it for years is that it works. And when a product works, it sets you up for success and makes sure that you can do something amazing. And reducing our overall waste impact using cloth diapers instead of disposable diapers is incredibly valuable to the earth. What I really love today about the conversation with Christina is that we were talking about things that sometimes we're scared to talk about. It can be scary to talk about the potential long-term impacts or the health risks or the environmental risks associated with products that we love. 
And while it scares us and it overwhelms us, it's important to have these conversations. And it's important to leave this conversation today not feeling judged or feeling shamed or feeling guilty, but feeling empowered, feeling ready to learn more and to shift your behaviors in small little ways that work for you, that work for the environment and work for your family. Shifting is not about being drastic. It's just about knowledge and it's about small changes, small pivots, and we all get there, whatever that end journey is, whatever that destination is. All right, if you've made it to the end of this podcast, don't forget to hit that subscribe button or leave a review. Subscriptions are increasingly important as I try to get a hold of bigger names, bigger brands to convince them to come on the show and share their story. As always, you can connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube at Cloth Diaper Podcast, or send me an email, bailey at clothdiaperpodcast.com. I am always looking for new guests to be on the show. I don't care how small or big you are. I think sharing stories about cloth diapering is my end goal here. Um, just a heads up, guys, that April 10th, I will be having a bunion surgery, and this may impact some of the show coming May, June, July, probably. So just stay posted. There may be a hiccup or two. All right. Until next time. Bye.